Hey, Toby. How you doing, Toby? You said you're a good boy, Toby. You want to go outdoors? You've been inside for a long time. Let's go outside. Come on, let's go outside. You want to go see Turbo? You need to go see Turbo. Good boy, baby. Good boy. Oh, such a sweetheart. There's Turbo. He's all wet. That's why he's outside. Come on, Toby. Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Look. Pool's all running. Water's starting to clear up. It's like not really a beautiful day, actually. It's pretty pretty crummy out. I know it doesn't look like it, but the wind is just atrocious. I'm trying to get this video rolling for the better part of the day, and every time I come outside, the wind is non-stop. Very much problematic for working with the microphone. Why is the picture so grainy? Does that look grainy and bad? What's going on? Doesn't matter. I'm just, I'll switch over to the better camera when the wind dies down. Probably be tomorrow, but I wanted to get this video started because there's a project that I really want to get going on. I'm very distracted right now by the peach. Look at that. Such a beautiful plant. So I just wrapped up the garden tour. I'm kind of wishing that I had waited to film it because I think things look so much better out here with the water being clear and the pool cover and everything being gone. Problem is, YouTube, when you upload a video, it does this thing where it runs checks. It checks for copyright problems and your language, just to make sure everything's okay for the site. And uh, lately it's been taking a long time to run the checks on the video. So for the garden tour, I just finished that edit. It took like five and a half hours to run the checks, which I think is the longest it's ever taken to do that before. So if I had waited until right now to film that video, because the pool people just left not that long ago, then I would run the risk of the video not being up and ready when it's time to come out because it takes so long. So basically videos have to be done 24 hours in advance to, okay, Turbo, just to compensate and make sure there's time for those checks to run. So what I'm working on right now, what I would like to work on this week over the next few days, weather permitting, it looks like it's going to be kind of a sketchy week weather-wise. Forecast keeps changing, but I think there's going to be a bunch of rain. Oh, you go swimming, Toby? Yeah? Go in for a little wade. That's nice. I love seeing him swim. So does Turbo. I mentioned in the garden tour, I'm trying to stay on track here and try and stay focused. I've done a lot of talking to the camera over the last few days and that tends to scramble my brain up. So it's a good thing it's vlog time, so I don't have to stay focused on one topic. The uh, hydrangea trees, they gotta go. They don't fit the spot anymore. Like I said, I talked about all that in the garden tour. I want to move these into planters that normally go on each side of these steps. They still go on each side of these steps. This right here, have two of these. I think they'd look nice in those. Last summer I had a couple of hydrangea trees that were just hanging out here for a while before I was able to get them planted up at my sister's house actually. And I had them sitting in these two pots and looking through the windows, it just, it looked so pretty. I was like, well I could do that down here. Why not? That might be a pretty good spot for them because the paniculators do like some sun. <laughs> A good amount of sun, actually. They would get more light right here than they're getting over there. And one of the problems I have picking out what to put in the pots that go on each side of these steps has always been a lighting issue because this side of the steps gets far less light than the other side. With the paniculatus, I think that that should be okay because there's still enough light here to keep them flowering. There's more light right here than there is over there where they are right now. I think that that would work out well. If not, you can give them away, find somewhere else to plant them. That would be fine, but... That's what I gotta do right now. I think that's the first thing I want to get done. I did just check the radar and apparently there's a storm that's like 20 minutes away. You wouldn't know it. Maybe I won't get started on this until tomorrow. Uh, I'd like to at least just get, you know, I'm gonna put the camera down and just get to work. I'm gonna at least try and get one of them moved into those blue pots and then maybe pick up tomorrow. I don't know, we'll see what the weather does. Look at all the mud. That's just disgusting. I have a pressure washer. I need to take him to the shop and get it fixed because Ew. I was thinking about it, and these have been in these pots for like, what, four years now? Something like that. So people are probably going to want to see what's going on down in there, which is, yeah, that's fine. We can talk about it. There's a honeysuckle that climbed over and is climbing up that pole, so I need to make sure that the tree is free, not attached anywhere. And I already pulled some of the leaves out, most of the leaves out from in there. Some creeping Jenny starting to come up. There's some little bits of, uh, 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 get away. Okay, so this is my mic transmitter. I should probably find a better way to clip that up. Trying something different with the audio this week, which I will probably regret, but you don't know until you try. Practice makes perfect, right? So there's another bit of that honeysuckle in there. Gotta get that pulled out. How much you wanna bet that those, oh, never mind. I was thinking those roots had probably grown down and 
into the ground. But I think was it? I think last year I pulled this up and pruned the roots out from the bottom because it wasn't draining well. So I suppose that that's not a problem. Oh well, that makes this much easier. All right, so I'm just gonna lean this over, pull it out, and plop it in the other pot. Easy peasy. Ooh, okay, <laughs> just kidding. Nothing about that was easy. That thing really rooted in there. I've got my pot moved over here, have it filled up to what I think is going to be about the right level with a fresh mix. That was another thing with these hydrangea trees. Come over here and have a look at that root ball. The plants, you know, you have them in the same pot for multiple years and the soil starts to get muddy. You see that? I mean, look at it. That's not great, not ideal, not what we want for potted plants. That's not going to breathe very well. So it was time to get this done anyways. This probably actually would have drowned and died this year. I think that that's way too compact for it. So I'm going to try and loosen a good amount of that muck out of there, get it potted up, and then hopefully be done before the rain moves in. I guess if I stop talking, odds of that happening will be much better, won't they? Oh my gosh, I love it. He's having the time of his life swimming around trying to eat the water that comes out of those dolphins. Look at how cool these look. I know they're just sticks, so it's, it's not much to really talk about just yet, but oh, it's gonna be so pretty. I'm so happy with this decision. The one down here still needs its cut back. This one I cut back in the fall, which you're really not supposed to do, but you couldn't walk around over there. Like you had to duck and go underneath it. So for safety reasons, since it's right next to a pool, I went ahead and gave it its prune. Probably could have planted them in just a little bit higher up. Like if I have trailers in here, those are, might have some issues coming over, but uh, we will see. Cause this might need, no, I don't think that needs a top off. This root ball was at a slight angle. So this one was a little bit more tricky to get potted up than that one over there. Oh, okay. So here's what you have to do. You have, just have to imagine green leaves and big like cone shaped white flowers that come off of these really big, like 12 to 14 inch size flower bundles. They start off kind of a whitish green and then they fade into a pink. They're very, very, very pretty. It's so hard to focus when he's over here doing that with the film. Oh, little dork. Love him so much. I also very much appreciate how good he is at keeping himself entertained. I'd say the hardest part with these is going to be keeping them straight. I mean, they aren't going to start rooting in anytime soon. They're not even in active growth yet, but I got those stakes down in each pot as far as I could. And I guess since they don't have leaves on them, maybe the wind won't move them around too much. Uh, we will see. Okay, now the next thing, not today, because it's starting to get late, need to feed the dogs, and supposedly there's a, a storm coming in. I don't, I don't know what that's about. I don't think it's going to rain, but that's what the radar says. I will get all this stuff cleaned up and cleared out tomorrow. Well, not this. Everything over here is staying, but from here and over, want it gone. Want to be able to see that wall. Not yet, though. Forgot. I didn't finish watering this one, and I took a break when I saw Turbo swimming underneath that fountain to film him, because it was really cute, and now I just need to... We'll do this. Go inside, feed the doggies, maybe see the pets, and pick up tomorrow. Well, actually, I don't know if we will pick up tomorrow. Depends on what the weather's doing. Something will be happening here pretty soon. Hey, Turbo, you show everybody your big boy spot? Look at that. No more crate. You're all grown up. No more crate, baby. Tired of looking at it, and I kept thinking about the different reasons as to why I would keep it, and there really weren't any. He doesn't use it anymore. He eats in it, but he doesn't even... <laughs> Hold on. He didn't even really eat in the crate all that much. He just like would stick his head in there and eat his food because there was a pad so it helped raise his bowl up. He was using the slow feeder bowl here. Doesn't need that anymore either. He doesn't eat quickly. Sometimes he just walks away from his food altogether and he's like, I'm done. I've never in my life had a Labrador who would just eat as he pleases. It's very nice. I really like that about him. He doesn't just inhale the food. He eats until he's full and then he's done. Walks away from it. It's very nice. Toby? No. Cannot say the same for Toby. Right, Toby? That's why you're a Toby Potamus, right, Toby? So that's like the only issue is making sure Toby doesn't eat the food when he walks away. Hey, Pumpkin. Come in and say hi, Bite. How you doing, baby Bite? Pumpkin Bite. Pumpkin Bite. That's why I call, I don't, that's why I call her baby Bite. That was sweetheart. That's what's new in the house. So nice to not have that crazy, this desk. Got, I know it doesn't look great right now, but it got so messy because it was so hard to get over to it. I started to <laughs> clean it up. And next thing I knew, the table, which I had just cleaned off, was like piled high and been or you get it. Cleaning, spring cleaning, starting to get things organized, get the kitchen put back together. Also, there was a big pie safe here. That's gone now too. I have a nice big open wall. Very nice. 
Nice to have that space again. Such a good boy. When I fed him yesterday morning, it was the first time he'd eaten outside the grate, so I had to sit on the ground and hold the bowl up. I had to hold this up for him because I felt bad for him. He's too tall to be stretching down the ground to eat, so I ran to Home Goods and got a raised feeder. He seems to like it. The cat likes it. There's like four water bowls around for the cats, but even Charlie still, he stretches up there and gets the food. He's a weirdo. I also got another bottle while I was there. No, don't need it, but these are so cool. I love them. So fun for terrariums. Be able to pop that little cork off and throw something neat in there. Hopefully something that doesn't need maintenance or to ever be removed. Nice, very fun. And a terrarium kit. You be popping that open and evaluating it in a video to a little test. I also found a candle warmer. Don't know how old this is. I don't use these anymore. That's going to Goodwill probably. <laughs> She's starting to give me the look. Give me that face. She's like, hey, where's my food? Oh, before turning off for the night and picking up later, here's an update on the grassy terrarium. Look at the dew. It has dew drops on it in the morning and in the evening. How stinking cute is that? I need to come in and do a little bit of cleanup and open that path up overall. It's looking so neat. I'll show it again at the end of the video so we can see how much it's grown by then. Hey, baby, look what he just did to my pants. Did you do that? Did you do that? I guess it's my fault. I told him he could give me a hug and I didn't realize he had been in the pool. Thanks, Turbo. Oh, oh, I get another hug. Thank you. Thank you. You're only supposed to do that if I say you can. You have to have permission. You gotta get down. Get down. Good boy. I know the couch is torn up despite there being cat scratchers right next to it. Charlie, the old one, he's like, yeah, I'm sure they just tear up the furniture. Cats. It's a toy of Turbo's. Cracks me up every time. Every time I see it, it's a couple days later, I've gone on a rabbit hole looking at garden obelisks and obelisk, obelisk, I mean, how do you all prefer to say it? It doesn't matter. We'll talk about that some more in a minute. Oh, did you get your carrot? Did you get your carrot? Good boy, Turbo. Want to go outdoors? Yeah, let's go outdoors. We've got some things to talk about and to catch up on with this some little disastrous spot over here in the corner disastrous spot. I don't know what I was trying to say. The mess. Y'all know what I've been working on this whole time. Whew, it is cold. 43 degrees. I suppose that's not horrible, but it's a far cry from the 75 it was just a couple of days ago. It rained all day yesterday, so some time has passed. Water's clearing up. Need to get in there and brush the bottom now that I can see it. The patio flooded as it does in the springtime. It didn't make its way to the pool, but the water was coming out to right around. You can see where it sort of came through here so I spent a while outside with the shovel trenching out this area because there's a drain down here that all this moves to so there's just a big old fun mess from all that flooding. Uh, I'm not really that concerned about it. The pressure washer is going into the shop tomorrow so hopefully sometime in the next few weeks I'll have a pressure washer to work with again and I can come out here and get things looking nice again. So look at that. That's so gross. It was a lot of rain. It got tons and tons of rain which is a great Love the spring rain. Not so much the flooding, but I don't think any areas had any like harmful flooding, so we're good there. I can get back to work on <laughs> fixing this spot over here. One thing I forgot to mention with these hydrangea trees, I should talk about how I transplant or know when to transplant. With woody shrubs like this or trees, right around the time when they start to swell. Let's see if we can get in here and get a look at those buds. No? You don't want to? There we go. You see how that bud right there, that node where that leaf is, things are starting to swell up. A new leaf is going to push out from there. That's right around the time that it's okay to do transplanting. Still have to do it carefully, but that's what I like to look out for. Is to see the swelling in the green inside of there. Know that the action's taking place. Hormones are moving around the plant, so can go ahead and get them dug up, moved around. It's not too hot, so they shouldn't stress from being moved. It's more just a matter of making sure they don't dry out. And there is a bird's nest in here. That's, that's last year's bird's nest. There's nothing in there. I made sure before I started messing with these. What's left now is, well, I need to give this hydrangea tree a cut back, and uh, I'm going to start getting these pots out of here. I'm not throwing them away. I'll repurpose them. I'll use them for something else. I already mentioned the two big ones, the one right here and the one right there. Those are going to be used for the mule palms. I thought about painting them, but I don't think I'm going to have them right next to each other, so I don't, I don't see a reason to bother with that. And then uh, maybe figure out something with the honeysuckle on my... Uh, the obelisk thing. I told y'all about the obelisk rabbit hole I went down. That's because I was thinking about maybe putting the honeysuckles 
up onto uh, just a couple tall obelisks on each side. I talked about digging them up. I just, I don't know. I have made my mind up on that yet and I don't need to. We still have some time to figure that one out. One more quick distraction. We have all the creeping Jenny coming up from in here. It's exciting. Love seeing all the green. Makes me so happy. Oh, and I do have a couple of something specials. I'm very excited to show y'all what's going to go in these spots. I'll start cleaning some stuff up. Turbo knocked all that dirt over. I need to find something to scrape that stuff up with. Shovel, that should do. Oh, careful, Turbo. You almost got hurt, baby. That should work. It's rusty, but it'll do the trick. Okay, pot one is gone. Now just one, two, three, four more to go. I'm sort of in the mood for a before and after, because how entertaining is it to watch me move pots around? Probably not so much. There we go. Did Turbo kick the tripod? I think he may have. Still plenty of cleanup to be done, but uh, the big stuff's out of there. Already looks better, doesn't it? I mean, other than the fact that it's a disgusting mess, at least it looks less cluttered. Right? I need to grab my pruners, my clippers, and come in and clean some things up. I think I might try and shift these down some more. This is where a lot of the shade tropicals go during the summertime, so I do need to have these planters put over here. Y'all can't even see what I'm talking about right here. So I have tropicals that plop into those plants, but I think I could scoot them down and maybe make it look nicer, or just, in general, just scoot them down so they're out of the way. For the honeysuckle, I don't, no matter what, I'm going to dig up some pieces of it to put over there by the fence at some point, but it's just, it's a privacy thing. They add so much privacy, I and mean, y'all can see. You know, it's it just, I want a little bit more of a shield there, because the whole hedge thing, it's a great idea, and I'd love to do it, but I feel I'll find the plants and budget it out, right? So that, I don't know if that'll happen this year. That was just me fantasizing about things. Hopefully it will. I don't know, but for right now I have something here, so maybe I'll grab some stakes. I don't think I have enough big ones, but I can probably find something to mock that one up so it's at least not coming over the side of the wall. I'm gonna do that. Eh? What do we think? I know, there's leaves and stuff all over the place. I'll get to that, but the honeysuckles? So imagine like a couple of eight foot tall obelisks on each side there. Obelisk, obelisk. I already told y'all, I don't know how to say it. Might look nice. I know that that's very, very, very sloppy. But I only had four stakes, they're only three feet tall. One of them broke and turbo ran off with my twine, so I used a bungee cord and I cut a ton off of that honeysuckle. And it looks like it could still use some more cleanup. But isn't it just having the wall cleared up? So much better. Now I need to go find a rake and a bag and start. Yeah, oh, oh, I'm getting excited. Getting to the fun part. Any excuse to use the tiny rake. Love using this thing. Turbo, stop knocking around the tripod, dude. Be careful what I, I call him dude with the neighbor's dog. He's up there. His name's dude. I, I don't remember what I left off on. So here's what's happened. Leaves. I think that's what I was doing. Got the leaves and the twigs. Got the leaves and the twigs. Filled up here in the barrel, at least a lot of them. Not everything. Some of it I'm gonna wait until it's drier and I can use a blower. I think it'd be a lot easier to get inside all the little crevices in the staircase and underneath the steps if I had the blower. But I got the majority of them pulled out. I went through with my shovel and trenched out both of these drainage pathways here. Might be kind of hard to see. Turbo, get out of the tripod, get out of the tripod. Harder to see depth and dimension and video, but I went through it dug out an area here so I can come in here and try and hose a lot of this garbage off. And look at it. You see that? Look at all the muck in the mud. I'm not going to get it spotless because the ground's saturated, so I have a strong feeling that the water is just going to pool and not really flow. But it'll at least be an improvement, as long as it doesn't pull back on the patio, that is. Remember before when I was talking about the water pooling up and coming out? This will have to be where I stop with that end. The ground's just too wet, it's not getting soaked up. Okay, much better. Clean walls, I had to put turbo inside. It was cute to jump in and all this stuff, but it was it was driving me absolutely crazy. It's too cold to have water splashing all over the place. All right, now I feel like this is okay enough for right now to go ahead and finish this up. I got to think, you want to see the things? Oh, I'm so excited to show you the things. Here it is. Look at them. Aren't they beautiful? 
Pretend the mud's not there. The ground's wet. I can't, I just, nothing I can do about it. I love them so much. So these planters are ones that I've been watching out for for a few years. If I met the nurseries, but they've always sold out before I could get my hands on them. I think these came out in 2017 from Le Bo Le, Bo Le Bo I don't know. Very popular major company for selling ceramic pottery. These are the Beverly Beverly. Can we just title this video? Jeff doesn't know how to talk. Words that I don't know. 36 inches tall by 25 inches wide. These are some big pots. I don't know exactly what I'm going to put in them yet. I have lots of ideas going through my head, but we're not there yet. Unless I were to put some sort of evergreen in these, which I don't plan on doing. Aren't they just gorgeous? That lovely aqua or turquoise, whatever color blue you want to call that, glaze on them with the ripples. It looks like there's water flowing off the sides of them. They make excellent pots to have water running over the sides of them. I'm not going to be doing that. Not over here. Too much gunk comes falling out of the trees. I'll be cleaning them nonstop. So these pots are the reason that I started to second guess digging up the honeysuckle. Just imagine that gorgeous, like, corally pink colored flower right behind these pots. Wouldn't that just be absolutely beautiful? And then the privacy thing that I mentioned. That's a big one. I'm gonna go around online and look at some obelisks. So I have some time to think about that and to plan out some beautiful things for these pots. Like, can't you just see them like full bromeliads and crotons or just uh, like uh, anything? I think anything would look absolutely beautiful on these. I'm not going to have anything too aggressive as far as trailers go over the sides because I don't want to hide the pots, right? I want to be able to see them. Or if I do put a trailer in these that is an aggressive trailer, then I'll want to keep it maintained so you can still see the pottery. Also, nothing big going in these. These cannot, I do not want them blowing over. It is so windy here. All the storms and everything. I mean, you guys have seen it if you watched the videos from last summer. Like, things just blow around and get knocked over out here. Not doing that with these pots. I'm gonna drill some extra holes in the bottom. I might actually put a plate underneath it so that I can pack some gravel or like a cement plate underneath the pot to help anchor it down. There will be weight or some sort of anchor to keep them in place, but regardless of that, still nothing tall that can catch the wind and blow all over the place. So it's gonna be shorter things. I wouldn't say anything over three feet at the max. And if it's three feet tall, it's got to be something that can move around in that wind. Get some different angles here. Look at it. Oh, it's so pretty. They aren't perfectly level yet, but the ground over there, I couldn't see what I was doing. Got my tools here. There's too much water, but there's nothing in them. And they're at least in a spot where I don't think Turbo could get to them and knock them over. I think that those just look absolutely fantastic. They match the other pottery that's out here much better too, color-wise. I have a project where you're just like your skin's crawling to get it done. This was that for me. I don't know if you could tell in the garden tour I talked about this area a lot, like a lot, and I just needed to rip that band-aid off. Yesterday when it rained all day it was driving me nuts. I wanted to come out here and just start digging and moving and pulling things, but had to wait. I probably should have waited another day, but the video needed to come out, so no time to wait for things to dry. This area right there, right above the mallet, and, oh, we already talked about that. Tropical, some things will be going over there when it's nice enough to bring those outside. This could use some spotlights, don't you think? I'll probably have to do that when they get planted up. So over here is where that view was bothering me the most. When I look through the window in the house and see all those pots and that giant mess that was over there. That's so much better, so much more tidy. It's still muddy and messy, but it's tidy. You can get the pressure washer and get some more scrubbing done out here and uh, clean that swinger. Swing, not swinger. Glider. <laughs> the glider. Glider needs to be cleaned up. I just keep bouncing back and forth between wanting to look at the pretty pink flowers and the gorgeous blue pottery down there. Love them. Thanks for hanging out. This may have been a shorter video than normal for a Saturday, but if you could tell my voice is hanging by a thread from the long garden tour video the other day and the pollen and everything outside. That and it's cold and disgusting out here and I don't want to be outside anymore. Peach trees and their little spring fillers down there, they're still looking good. Not much to report with them because we haven't really had weather that's conducive to growing. I suppose the flowers, some of the stems have started to elongate some. Silicon happy, silicon cherry, silicon pretty. Oh and I finally finished siliconing this basin here and filled it up the rest of the way this morning. It was already about halfway full from all the rain yesterday and it doesn't look like the water line's gone down at all. I'll be able to get that fountain set back up next week. Uh, hopefully all the shuffle talk <laughs> that was going on during the garden tour and somewhat in this video about moving all the different things around makes more sense now. You can see hydrangea trees now over here. I have those big giant pots sitting over here in my potting area 
Just waiting for the mule palms. It warms up. I'll get those transplanted into those. Those are, I think they're 30 inch containers. Finally, a nice clean space over here. No more cluttered. Turbo found the seashell. Hopefully the weather will be better next week. We can do some fun things with plants that have some leaves on them. Not just, you know, dormant twigs. Those are going to look beautiful, I promise. That's going to be absolutely stunning when they flush out and have all those flowers on them in the late summer and in the fall time. And it's starting to rain. Water's starting to ripple up. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. Progress in the gardens. Things warming up yet? No, it's been an interesting spring so far. Like, it hasn't been horribly cold, but it hasn't been terribly warm either. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye. Wait, no, no, forgot. Gotta do the grass update. Yeah, there it is. It hasn't changed that much since the last time you saw it. it. Hasn't changed that much, but need to get in there and pick some stuff out.